Hello, I'm Dan, and this is Dan Explains. I got a lot of new subscribers recently, so before I begin, I'd like to revisit a couple of things about the format of my channel. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while and just want to skip this explanation, just go to the time listed below. I'll see you there. My area of expertise is in molecular biology. However, I have a wide variety of interests, including pretty much all areas of science, and also occasionally history and even physics. My other major area of interest is theology, in particular, Catholic Christian theology. Now, I encourage everyone to watch all of my videos, but I recognize that many people who subscribe to my channel are either not interested in science or not interested in theology. To that end, my video titles and thumbnails have icons to help people identify the type of content. I put an atom for non-theological content, a cross for theological content, and both for videos that connect both. Personally, my favorite types of videos are the ones that contain both. Okay, on to today's topic, which is this new colorful map of the United States. Why does this map have so many colors? It's because it's the new hardiest zone map released by the USDA to help gardeners and, more importantly, farmers figure out the things they're able to grow. What I think is even more interesting is how it's also different from this map. And no, I'm not talking about the hand-drawn versus the computer-generated styles of the maps. Let me explain why. Before I begin, I'd like to mention this isn't going to be some environmentalism video where I lead you to a cherry-pick conclusion and then bock you on the head once I get you there. It's going to be a simple, unbiased examination of the new map, and how it's changed over the last 60 years or so. Anyway, Harney Zone maps are not a new thing. People have been creating these maps to help other people figure out where they should be able to plant various types of plants, based on the minimum temperature they can handle. This one even goes back to 1845. There are various other types of maps made to help people find what they can plant based on other factors like rainfall as well. More on other map types at the end. In the 1900s, in the US, the hardiness zone maps were mainly put out by the Arnold Arboretum until around 1960, when the USDA decided they could do a better job. And quite frankly, if you look at how the zones are divided up in the 1960 USDA map, and how inconsistent they are in the 1967 Arnold Arboretum map, I think the USDA was correct. On the Arnold Arboretum map, some zones are 15 degrees, and others are only 5 degrees, which can be a bit confusing. Especially if you try to compare the zone numbers of the Arnold Arboretum maps to the USDA maps. When comparing the maps, a naive person would think the world is about to burn down, although their explanation for their confusing zone cutoffs was that they were closer to the cutoffs for the cold tolerances of various common plants growers usually like to look for. Now that I got the boring history out of the way as quickly as possible, what about the differences in all these maps? Each map is about 30 years apart. 1960, 1990, and 2020, although there is one in between which I'll mention in a minute. On a side note, believe it or not, I enhanced that map from 1960 to make it easier to see. Anyway, they take the average annual minimum temperature for the previous 30 years. Some places don't seem to change too much due to large changes in elevation. Let's take a look at New England, since that's where I'm located and I'm more familiar with the area. Between the 1960 and 1990 maps, there's a small amount of warming overall, but for most places, not much of a change. The average temps stay pretty steady too. However, look at what happens when we jump to the new map. The zones move northward and into higher elevations. The average temp for this region over the same period has also gone up, although not by the startling 10 degree rise in average minimum some spots have seen. All of this northward change in growing zones is pretty consistent across the whole East Coast. From 1990 until 2020, it's worth noting the temperatures for the Southeast specifically dropped between the 1960 map and the 1990 map, and is up only about a quarter of a zone hotter in the newest map than it was in the 1960 map. Also, I have to mention, the USDA released one of these maps back in 2012, which actually matches pretty close to the 1990 map. So, that shows there's been a significant amount of northward movement of the growing zones in the last 10 years. So the climate, at least on the east coast of the US, has warmed up a little. 
But more importantly, it has gotten much more mild, at least on the colder end of things. Why does the USDA release these maps? Well, to let people know what plants they can plant in their area. Of course, we don't see the wild plants change because, well, plants don't tend to walk too fast. Although foresters, who often have to think 50 years ahead, are planting trees in areas further north than their traditional ranges because the climate in those areas is now suitable. This is all fine and dandy, correct? I mean, the higher your growing zone, the greater diversity of plants you can grow, right? I mean, who wouldn't want to be able to grow an orange outdoors in New England? Here's the secret. If you want to, you already can. The issue is what the new USDA map doesn't show. You see, there are maximum annual temperature growing zones as well. If your temperature gets too hot, certain types of plants can't be grown anymore. This is especially bad for trees, which, as I pointed out earlier, lack the ability to walk. But that's a story for another video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please press the like button. Subscribe to my channel and ding the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Also, please support me on Patreon. Link in the description. The more people support me, the more time I can dedicate to making videos like this one. So, until next time, have a great week.